Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, today's topic is how to sell your website for profit, and our speaker is Chelsea Clark. Hello. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for coming to check out my session. Uh, today, we're going to dive sort of right into some practical things that you can do to position your site to sell, to get it ready, to get it monetized in a way that's going to be attractive for when buyers come looking. And even if selling your website isn't a goal, um, you're still going to be able to walk away, hopefully, with some practical tips just to bring more traffic and revenue to your WordPress sites. Um, so I also want to cover what your website would actually need to have in order, some sort of best practices if you wanted to have a $100,000 exit or more. So I'm using that as a good example, kind of baseline. Um, and I'm Chelsea Clark. <laughs> I am a business intermediary. I'm a content creator and an investor. I have two companies. One is Her Paper Route. That's where I buy, scale, and sell content sites and teach other people how to do it too. We have a podcast as well called Her, the Her Paper Route Podcast. And I founded the Niche Investor Marketplace. This is where we connect buyers and sellers uh, to sell content sites on the platform in a safe way to do it. Hey guys, come on in. <laughs> We're just getting started. You haven't missed anything yet. Um, yeah, and I was born in Vancouver, born and raised. I live on Vancouver Island now. Uh, I'm, you're going to hear me talk about website investing and blog flipping, and they are one and the same. They really are the same thing. Um, you've probably seen those HGTV shows where someone buys a house, renovates it, flips it for profit, and website investing is really the same, except you don't need a team of contractors or a huge mortgage to get into it. Um, some of the time it's actually you can make a very small micro investment to get started, or you already have a blog, an online business that you're already working on now, and then you can just generate more traffic and revenue to it and make it worth more at resale. Okay. So let's dive into this. And I do want to say too, if you have concerns about, is it going to be risky to sell my business? How do I know what it's going to be worth? What if I get taken advantage of by a buyer? Things like that. We will cover that in this session. And I have a free thing to give to you at the end too that will you can walk away with and it'll help you with those very valid concerns too. Yeah, so to give you an idea of what content sites or blogs typically can sell for, it's really all over the map. There's no, like if, because every WordPress site is different, there's no way to say your site will definitely sell for this. Um, but these are some creators that have sold on our platform. Um, Emily sold her food blog for 150,000. Kellen sold his gaming niche site for 20,000. Um, Brandon sold his yoga blog for 38,000. Kyle sold, sold a course reviews blog for 325. Thousand. This is all in US dollars too, I should mention. Um, and then we have some creators that actually start starter sites and flip a couple of those a year. Uh, so really it's, it's all across the board, but I'll, I'll show you sort of some different stages you can go through to, to reach the number, whatever your goal number is. So what are some things that make a website more valuable than others? Uh, the first thing, we'll get it right out of the way, is profit. If your site's making more profit, it's going to sell for more. But there's definitely some other things that come into play which can actually increase the value or decrease it in some cases. <coughs> so different types of revenue can actually be more valuable than others when it comes to selling a content site. So affiliate marketing revenue, that's a golden one. We like that one. Digital products is great. And of course, ad revenue from display ads like uh, AdSense, Mediavine, Monumetric. Those are kind of like the trifecta when you're selling an online business. Now, of course, there's physical products, there's different things like that, but we talk about those three uh, because your buyer pool is going to be bigger. It doesn't take uh, special skills. They're more passive, those types of revenue types, so you're going to be able to have more people to take interest in your site. The content quality, that's the biggest one too. We want to see content sites that have human written content above all. So no PLR, that's like private label resale sort of rights. We want all the content to be original. And of course you can use AI. It's just again, your buyer pool gets bigger when you have a human written content site. 
And the traffic sources, of course, organic Google search traffic is going to be the hottest, um, any search engine really, but diversified. If your site right now only has traffic coming from Google, I mean, that's nice, but it's actually going to make it harder to sell. So you should look at things like Pinterest, different social platforms, anything that you can do to, to diversify your traffic is going to be more attractive to buyers. And then nice to have is if you have an email list, active social media accounts, that's always good to kind of package it into your site that you're going to be selling. Um, backlinks and a higher domain authority also adds to the value of your site. So you can use things, is that my mic that's making like crackling noises? Yeah, sorry. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, I'll try not to move around so much. I'm like a handsy talker as you can see, so it's hard for me just to like stay still. Um, and then also, so I was talking about getting, increasing your domain authority and getting more backlinks. You can use things like Harrow, which is help a reporter out, and Quoted, which is a newer one. It's a paid service, but that's really good too because you get connected with journalists who are writing for things like Forbes, Business Insider, things like that. So you can get backlinks back to your site that you're trying to build up the DA. And now well, some things that actually make it harder to sell your business. Um, so kind of on the opposite side, the, the flip side of those great revenue streams that we were talking about, ones that can be harder to sell, not impossible, but definitely makes your buyer pool smaller, is if you are selling a service, if that's your main revenue stream, because of course a new owner would have to have that skill or manage a team of people that could do it. Um, physical products, Physical product businesses do sell, but if we're just talking about content sites, stick with digital products would be my advice. And this one might surprise you, but sponsorship income, that actually doesn't add any value to the resale of your business because that is just usually a one-time deal between you and a brand, and it's not a recurring income stream that the new owner can expect to take on. So they're not gonna value sponsorship income in the valuation or in their offer. Um, so it's nice, it's a nice way to make money, but when you're thinking about reselling, kind of keep that in mind. But if we're going to break this down, how to actually sell your website for $100,000 and have that exit, um, some things to consider is the standard market valuation, um, typically in the industry, is sites sell between 24 and 36 times a site's monthly profit. Um, but what I've been seeing more recently is that sites are actually selling between 30 and 40. So we're seeing a higher multiple. And that's been since the start of COVID. So it seems like there's more, uh, more buyers out there trying to get these online businesses, which is great for you if you're thinking of selling. But if we're going to do this to get to a $100,000 valuation, now math is not my strong skill, <laughs> but if we break that down, we're trying to get that 40x, your WordPress site should be making about $2,500 a month, generally. Now, we can kind of make this kind of fun. So if you were to create one digital product, like an online course, price it for $500, you'd only have to make five sales a month to have a business worth a $100,000 exit. So hopefully that can kind of make you see that it can be a lot uh, less scary to, to sell your business and get those higher valuations when you break it down. Um, I want to quickly just go over that again. So important things to do if you're gonna be priming your, web, <laughs> priming your WordPress site to sell, it's kind of a mouthful, uh, is connect your Google Analytics and your search console, which you're probably already doing anyway just to run your business. Um, but that's gonna be really important when a buyer comes looking because they need to verify the traffic. You can say you have so many page views, but they're actually gonna to wanna to get view access to, to verify that before they make an offer. You're gonna be publishing high quality content. Um, I also recommend avoiding putting your real person persona on your site if you're thinking of selling it. So you can create an avatar, you can, you know, like under a pen name. Uh, I'd say don't put pictures of your kids up on your site, especially if you're thinking of selling because then that new owner, they could do anything they want with your site. And then focusing on those three revenue streams, which were affiliate marketing, digital products, and ad revenue. And some advertise networks, they actually pay more than others. So we find that things like Mediavine, tend to pay better than Monumetric or uh, AdSense, not always and not in all niches, but 
from my experience and what I've seen working with publishers, it seems like Mediavine is pretty good. And I'll give you an example of that. This is a site that I had on Monumetric. Now, I really like Monumetric. They have a low barrier to entry. I think it's 10,000 page views a month, and you can get your site into it. Whereas Mediavine, you have to have 50,000 page views in the last 30 days in order to be eligible, or sorry, 50,000 sessions in the last 30 days. So you can kind of get onto Monumetric first. And this is what I did with this site. You can see it dropped off on September 12th, because that's when it became eligible for Mediavine, and I moved it. But when I was on this network, um, I wasn't getting very good RPMs. So like $2.84 was an average, which is very low. And it's saying that the highest I ever had with them was $4.32. So I was like, oh, I don't think that's very good. Uh, comparing it to my other sites, it just wasn't really performing on Monumetric at all. So I moved it over to uh, Mediavine. And on the day that it onboarded, which is September 13th, uh, the RPM started at $12. So already that's much better than two. And then each day it went up as it sort of uh, balanced out. It was up to $22 on September 16th, which brought in $63. So by comparison, I was making like $9 on a good day on Monumetric. And then I'm making over 60 on Mediavine. Uh, same traffic levels hadn't even added a new blog post yet. This is just in the same week. So just something to consider. Uh, if you're going to be selling your site, making it a goal to get onto something like Mediavine, because not only is that attractive to the buyers, because then they know you're on a premium network and they can you know, benefit from that, but while you're working on the site, you're getting paid to work on it, basically. So you're not losing money by making this a project site that you're planning on growing and selling. Um, and of course, focusing on SEO, growing the traffic and revenue at the same time, and just making sure that you're tracking your profit and loss. I like to do it every single month because buyers like to see that monthly breakdown. It's a lot easier for them to see exactly where the affiliate income comes from, what programs are performing on a month-to-month -month basis, than if you just have everything at like a year end that doesn't give the buyers uh, you know, as much information as they can find useful. So I want to do a little project here. Uh, what I would do if I had a content site and I was getting it ready to, to flip, let's say in six months. So whether you have a site right now that you're working on or you're thinking about buying one that you're going to work on and then flip for more, um, either way, where I would start is I would start by doing a content audit. And I would go into Google Search Console. Um, on the left-hand side, there's a bar that says search results. I'm sure you guys, a lot of you here will know this. Um, but go right to the queries, and we'll find which ones are performing, like, not necessarily too low, maybe on the front page, but definitely not at the top of search results. We're going to find the ones that are getting a little bit of traffic lower down on the first page, because those are going to be our ones that we can work on to improve. And we're going to look for a top 10 and start there. So I'm going to find the top 10 blog posts that could be a bit better with a little bit of love. And here's what we would do. So um, over here, this is your blog post. What I would do is for those top 10 blog posts is I would do content audit, being improving the content, adding more affiliate links or better, higher paying affiliate program links. I would check for spelling errors. I would just m make it more meatier, make it better, make it interesting. Um, maybe I would find a partner that would pay better than something on like share sale. Maybe I could go directly to the brand and get a private deal for a higher commission. Uh, so in that blog post, I would have uh, a, a lead magnet opt-in. So I would want you to create two products, just two products. One which would be a free lead magnet, and then one which would be your paid digital product. So in the example of the online course, that's what would be the paid one. So we would have the lead magnet uh, opt-in form embedded in the blog post. When someone clicks, they enter their email to get the free thing. They click the opt-in button. We want that to redirect to a tripwire page. And let's say that your course on your main for sale page uh, would be $9.97. But when they land on the Tripwire page, they get an offer for $500 to get in for a bit uh, of a deal. So remember, our goal is to only get five sales a month to have a $100,000 exit. That's how I would set it up. So if people said, yes, let's do it, they'll purchase, they go onto the thank you page, whether or not they 
purchase it, they're still getting the, uh, the free lead magnet. It's working in the back end here, and they're receiving that through your email service provider. And now sending traffic to those blog posts, because remember it's your top 10 that you're just gonna focus on. All your content is great, but if we're just gonna focus on 10 posts to get that valuation up, then you can see I've made Pinterest the biggest icon. All these other icons are great, other different ways to send traffic, but Pinterest is gonna be like your savior because it is a huge search engine. If you're ranking on Pinterest, you can be getting traffic from those clicks for years. Um, so it's so crinkly. <laughs> Sorry if that's annoying, guys. I'm trying not to move too much. Um, so using Pinterest, I would just go and I'd add pins, like images, to all of the blog posts, maybe five pins, get those ranking on Pinterest. I'd create boards on my Pinterest account that have keywords specifically to those blog posts. So if you're blogging about how to grow tomatoes, you would have a Pinterest board called how to grow tomatoes this is just going to send signals to Pinterest so they know what your content is about and you'll start ranking in their search um, another reason why I like Mediavine is sometimes they'll actually pay more for Pinterest traffic than Google traffic um, not always but this is the example of the site that I've just onboarded with them um, and I compared it to another two sites that I have with them, and right now it seems like they're really liking Pinterest traffic. So I'm getting a higher RPM for traffic coming from Pinterest, and my sessions are pretty low, but it's still doing pretty good. So I like to mention the Pinterest topic because not everybody is using it to its advantage, and it's, it's free, it's a great tool for any content creator. So to sort of pull those topics together, um, we would either work on a site that we already have or acquire a site and work on it and grow it. I do a content audit to improve the monetization. I would create one free lead magnet and one paid digital product, set up a tripwire page, focus on driving traffic, utilizing Pinterest specifically, um, make it a goal to partner with a premium ad network, utilize your email list, and of course track your profit and loss every month. And I would do this for six months and then get a website valuation and see what you can get, see, see what suggestions um, you might be, you never know, you might be surprised, it might be worth more than you think it is. Um, and I'll give you a free website valuation. So if you go to my site at nicheinvestor.com slash V-A-L, like valuation, um, we will, there's no obligation or anything. We just will look at your site, we'll look at your traffic, we'll look at your numbers, and we'll give you some suggestions on what it could potentially sell for. Um, but if it's not quite ready to sell yet, our team will just give you some ideas of how you could improve it or just generate a bit more traffic to get it ready. And again, that, there's no obligation there. Um, and the, the free offer that I wanted to give you too, uh, this is my niche site intro kit, which I do sell, but I want to give it to everybody here for free to say thank you for coming to see my presentation. Um, this includes interviews that I've done with creators who have had five and six figure exits. Um, there is a step-by-step -step training in what you can do, again, sort of more into detail than what I talked about here, but really just giving you that guideline to get your site ready to hit a marketplace. I've also included um, 100 ways to monetize your site just as a bonus. It's kind of like an idea bank that you can pull from at any time if you're ever thinking like, oh, but how can I make some money today? You can just dip into there and get it. Um, and a profit and loss, a digital tracker. So that can help you just keep on track of what's coming into your site, how much you're spending. Um, and when buyers are going to be making an offer, they want to see your profit and loss. They want to take a look at it to really understand it. So it's good to start tracking it now. Even if your site's making, what doesn't matter, a dollar or $20,000 a month, uh, just track each dollar. And then if your site, if you do want to list with us, um, we'll waive the listing fee if your site is approved to sell on our marketplace too. Um, but I'd love to answer some questions if anyone, I know I'm a, talk, a fast talker. <laughs> yes? I just really want to say thank you for promoting Pinterest. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember hearing 70% of people go on Pinterest intending to buy something. Yes. 5% or less of people who go on Instagram want to buy anything. Yes. So, and Pinterest, for whatever reason, is really neglected. Uh, 
in just the you know online space. So thank you for. I can't say enough good things about uh, why I should be doing more with Pinterest myself. Well, that's a good reminder, I think. I mean, for me, too, when I talk about it, then I feel like, oh, I need to actually work on my Pinterest more, <laughs> you know? Because it is. It really is a valuable tool. And the cool thing about Pinterest, too, is you can have uh, affiliate links on Pinterest. You can add shoppable links, like, to different stores. Um, idea pins can be a really great way to... Uh, to get your content out because Pinterest wants to promote uh, idea pins, it seems right now. So those are doing really well. Um, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> I just say one other thing that yeah. from back when I was a big time blogger back in the 2000s, um, post your blog post, like don't link to Facebook from your blog, uh, paste the URL into Pinterest and to Facebook so that people get traffic back to your site. Inbound links are inbound links. Yes. If you put your link on somebody else's social media, then you're getting the link juice, as opposed to, you know, having the Instagram feed where Inst Zuckerberg does not need more SEO points. <laughs> yes. Not more inbound links, but if somebody comes from there to you, that's an inbound link to your website, and that's money in the bank. I didn't know you could sell sites, but this is really. Good. That's a great point, um, too, because you also for affiliate marketing is why send a Pinterest pin directly to a product when you could send it to your website where you have more information about the product and then they can go and buy. So you're just keeping all the traffic coming to your site, um, wherever that's coming from, or Facebook, as you mentioned. So, yeah, that's great. Hi. Curious to see what your, um, I guess, experience of, like, um, perspective is on like which affiliate sort of websites to use. Like from my experience in websites that I have, I, I use Amazon, some private deals, and then some marketplaces like Impact. Yeah. I always find that Amazon, just like the quantity of like purchases that are actually followed through with is just so much higher than, you know, like than private deals or, or going directly to a specific brand. But I want to know your take on that and if like one is valued more than others when it comes to <coughs> sort of buying a website in the end. Definitely, and I remember I'm supposed to repeat questions into the mic, sorry. <laughs> so the question was um, about uh, different affiliate programs versus Amazon Associates or Amazon Influencer Program uh, versus doing private deals with brands. Personally, I like to have Amazon links on any of my content sites, even though, unfortunately, as we all know, Amazon doesn't pay the best when it comes to affiliate marketing, but they have everything. And everyone feels, well, a lot of people feel comfortable shopping there so the conversion can still be really good so in addition to doing private deals um, and using things like impact share sale uh, a win is another good one too there's lots of bigger brands cj.com I like to have a mix and if I find I've joined a program on CJ first and then it's getting a lot of conversions then I'll reach out to that affiliate manager and be like hey look I can show you that people buy your stuff from me um, can we do something uh, a special promotion <laughs> campaign something like that and then uh, kind of that blends into more like influencer marketing which can be can be good but like I said at the beginning if you're doing influencer deals that's a one-time deal so if you can just get a higher commission rate that's always the best that's what I'd recommend yeah any other questions hey Hi. Um, if we just want to do living website yeah where would we start yeah, well, I mean, if you already have a site, you've already started. Basically, everything that you're doing right now, oh, sorry, the question was, where do I start if I want to start flipping websites? Um, and I was saying that if you already have a site, everything that you are doing, every bit of effort that you're putting in, that is getting your site ready. So increasing the revenue, increasing the traffic, and then there's lots of different marketplaces that you can sell it on. So my one is nicheinvestor.com, but there's also Empire Flippers, there's Flippa, uh, Motion Invest, there's there's a lot of different platforms, so I can't speak to anyone else's company, but um, for my one, we're a small boutique brokerage um, that we kind of walk you through every single step. So when uh, you're ready to, to list, we actually help with negotiations, we manage the escrow, the closing, we ensure that you get paid, um, which is a nice thing because that can be kind of scary too if you're waiting for escrow to close, you have someone backing you up. But you can also sell privately. You don't need to work with a broker. So you can just get your site 
right to a point that you want to sell it, um, get a valuation from any of the marketplaces, and then just decide to sell it yourself. You can sell it in Facebook groups. You know, there's so many ways to do it. Um, I think just one foot in front of the other and jump into it. Um, Check out like YouTube as well. There's a lot of resources there. Um, on my blog too, herpaperroot.com, we have tons of free resources on blog flipping. Um, but really it's like more traffic, more revenue, that's gonna get you more, more a higher payday in the end. Yeah. Now, another question. Great. Uh, first of all, who buys, who's on the other side of these transactions? Who, if I start a blog on drones, I have a client who's uh, doing drone reviews. Um, who would buy that? And then second question is, how well do they do after they buy? What, yes. what, what are your obligations? Like if I sell a business, often I'll have to be involved for a year to uh, help in the transition. What is the obligation and how successful are the average uh, blog purchaser? Great question. So that question was, um, when you have a site, who is buying it and what is the success rate? Uh, what is expected of you as the seller to see that the, the business that you're selling is successful moving forward? We like to recommend a 30-day post-sale transition period. So this is for content sites. If you're selling a brick and mortar business with tons of inventory, then it's gonna probably be longer than 30 days. But if it's a content site, an affiliate site, something that earns from passive revenue streams, we find that 30 days um, to offer to the buyers usually is more than enough time. So that could be, we like to also put that in the contract because we don't want you as the seller to then be locked into like training for eight hours a day or anything like that unpaid. So we make sure that we set the guidelines in the sale agreement so everyone understands what that transition is like, how they get in contact with you, just emails, or do you have like a once a week Zoom call? That gets worked out on a deal by deal basis. Um, a lot of sites that we have sold on our platform, the buyers have run it for six months to a year and some of them come back and resell it at, for more. So we're actually finding some sites are coming back and being sold a few times and then the people who are buying they didn't want to buy it the first time because they didn't want to put the work in, but or the, the or the time in too. That's a big thing. So a lot of people, they have the money, but they don't want to spend the time on getting things up and running and you know the, all that startup work that it really takes to get a business going. So those are the buyers for those kind of deals. Does that answer your question? Oh, very well, thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> Hey. Uh, my question just around like the structure of the company. Um, so does it matter where you registered the business? Um, do you deal with certain territories or do you have trouble dealing with certain territories? And kind of linked to that is if there's payment gateways and there might be like reoccurring revenue, does it matter which payment <coughs> gateways you use um, or is it normally seen as from your perspective? That's a great question. So the question was, does it matter like where you live geographically, who you're selling to, um, and then the types of payment processors that you use in your business? And we've closed deals worldwide. So with online businesses, typically, not always, but typically, you can live anywhere and you can buy a business in another uh, country because it's an online business and it's not owned by a, like a corporation or an LLC dependent in that geographic location. Sometimes we've had businesses sell and it is owned by an LLC, so they dissolve that, they close that down, and then they're free to sell it as is. Um, as far as payment processors, if you're using something like Thrivecart, which I love, it's actually one of my favorite cart tools, the PayPal that you have connected to it has to stay with that Thrivecart account, so that can be kind of tricky, but you can just easily change the Stripe account to your own uh, Stripe account when you sell. Um, so it does get a little tricky with PayPal. You can take over a PayPal account, but then you have to kind of be back and forth with PayPal to prove that you own the business. It, it can be a little bit trickier. So I would say add your own PayPal in if you're buying, um, and then Stripe can be kind of used. At any, what platform are you using right now for selling products? Uh, we've got a few. Um, so we use we. We've got PayPal, Stripe, and then a few local ones from different countries. And, oh, yeah. yeah. 
I assume that's what you say, PayPal is a bit sticky. Yeah, I think any way that you can make it as seamless as possible for a new owner, that's going to help um, so that when they're looking at potentially buying it, they're not going to feel overwhelmed and scared that they have to, like a big learning curve to manage a bunch of different processors. If you can kind of get it down to a couple, that's going to help, but it's not, it, it's not necessary. And like I say, it's a deal by deal basis. Every business is going to be a little bit different, so you can kind of make it work the way that works for you. Yeah, thank you. Hey. Uh, do you have an idea of how long it might take to uh, create such a website? Um, how much time you spend on it? Uh, I think the question was how long would it take generally to work on a site before it's ready to sell? Nice. Um, well, that's going to be different for everybody. So the more effort you put in, the more money it's earning is going to be more it could sell for. So we have some sellers um, that, like I was saying at the beginning, sell starter sites, and they sell those for anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000, and they sell a couple different sites a year. So that's a smaller sort of micro business that they have. And then we have people who have been working on their business for years and they want to retire, and that's obviously a bigger one. But our biggest market is people who have been running a site for just six months to a year and then selling it. Hey. So I have two questions. So one is, uh, what tool would you suggest for the lead magnet you suggested? And the other, other is kind of like confusion for me, which is, you said about Pinterest, right? So yeah. as a developer, when I add a social media account below the social share, so Pinterest is the last thing I had. I do not have any idea how Pinterest was this much popular. Oh, yeah. So uh, where are this traffic coming into Pinterest? I mean, who are this traffic? Because for example, in our day-to-day -day life, we use Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. But I never personally used Pinterest search for anything. So who are these traffic? Is it applicable for like any type of blog that can share and traffic will be generated from Pinterest? Or? Yeah, so the question was, uh, well, your second question, I'll go back to your other one, uh, about Pinterest. Who are the people that are on Pinterest? Who, who is using Pinterest? Does it work for all niches? Um, I think Pinterest released something like 400 million monthly users, something like that recently. So it's a lot of people. It's not necessarily great for every niche, but ones that kind of across the board really do well are things like food blogs, so food content. Um, a little bit of tech as well, like how to do X, how to learn how to X, where to buy the best camera, stuff like that. Um, travel is huge on Pinterest. Uh, so people who use Pinterest, they're, I personally, I find that they're more in a shopping mode, sort of as you were saying. Yeah. 70% of people on Pinterest buy. Yes. So, so if, you know, and we tend to put them last, and that's dumb. <laughs> I'm the dumbest. <laughs> well, if you think about it, when you're looking at Pinterest, it's like a bunch of billboards. It's like a bunch of pretty things. And if you're on something like TikTok, I find when I'm on TikTok, I'm just in chill mode. I want my brain to just go numb, and I'm not trying to work. I'm not trying to think. I'm just wanting to laugh and get entertained. But if I'm on Pinterest, I'm like, oh, that looks cool, or how to do this. Oh, I want to learn, learn that skill. And I'll kind of click and go check out that person's website. So from personal experience, that's, that's how I use it. Um, but I'm sure it's going to be different in, in different markets and different niches that you're in. Um, your other question, though, about the lead magnet. Did you mean what I used for the slide or what I recommend for making lead magnets? I mean, what would you recommend the best tool for lead magnets? Canva. Canva's free. Canva's amazing. You can create everything in Canva. Um, just design something, download it. You could sell it, you can make it free. Um, I just put it in a funnel using ConvertKit as my email service provider. Um, ConvertKit can be a little bit pricier if you're not set having too many sales yet. So MailerLite is a nice one that is free up to, I think, 1,000 subscribers. And then as you grow, you can always move to something more robust. Um, but that's what I use for my email funnel and for creating digital products. And uh, I have Canva Pro now, and I find that's really helpful for images and you know stuff um, but definitely read the terms of service of canva because you can't just sell everything canva offers it's going to be different the graphics the images so you'll just want to make sure that you're not you know taking my word for it and then going and getting in trouble so <laughs> you know read canva's terms of service yeah so you mentioned um uh mailing lists uh what is a good healthy number uh back in the day again the size of your mailing list was way more important than how many uh how many monthly viewers you got to your website. Yeah. 
What, what is your position on uh, an ideal number of people on your mailing list? I think an ideal pe number amount of people on your email list to start sending a newsletter is one. Once you have one person on it, start sending newsletters, send them out with affiliate links as if you have a thousand people on your list. And I meant to sell. Like, is there a spot <laughs> for selling a, a, Oh, yeah. On for selling your business, the email list adds sort of like an extra nice to have. So it doesn't add an ex like a dollar amount specific. But if you have, let's say, 500,000 email subscribers, buyers are going to be like, oh, OK. And they're going to like bring the money out. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to sell for a specific amount um, every time. So we've sold businesses that have a list of 10,000 people. And it's actually been a starter site. It doesn't have much traffic yet, but they've been growing it through things like uh, social media that just with a lead magnet. So that's one way too, but usually you're going to want to have traffic revenue first and then email will be the next thing. It's all important. You can't just you can't you, like you can go buy 10,000 newsletter subscribers, but they're You not should not do that. <laughs> you need to have like conversion. You need to have the same analytics for your Yes, yes. Please no one go and buy email lists. That's not going to get you very far uh, for running a business. So yeah, I'm sure people do do that, but um, you would want to make sure that they're opting into your list. They're choosing to be there. Uh, you don't want to get any fines or anything like that for FTC or things like that. <laughs> Good point, though. Thank you. Any other questions? Hey. I might have missed this at the beginning, but what is your background? Is it an SEO? Yeah, so I've been a content creator for 20 years. I've been a business intermediary for the last 10. So I'm a, a broker. A business intermediary is a person that helps connect buyers with sellers for uh, selling businesses. And I've kind of had my toes in both the world of content creation, uh, running a portfolio of my own sites, and then also helping people uh, sell businesses. In the last two and a half years, we've done over $4 million worth of sales on the platform and those are small sites right so those are like the the average selling price for the those kind of sites have been under a hundred thousand dollars so for each one yeah cool everybody happy <laughs> awesome thanks guys <laughs>